settle in, the wacky Gun Talk After Show crew is gathered, and there's no telling what they'll say. All right, after show time. It is uh, Jim and Michelle are with us today. Hello, guys. Hello, Thomas. Hello, uh, everybody. Michelle, anything going on with you? Nothing. Yeah, Slow I week. Figure, sir. Slow week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Slow nothing. week at the old gun store. <laughs> right? <laughs> nothing to do here. Oh, boy. I tell you what, let's pick that up in just a few minutes. We do have some folks who have made it on to the after show, and I don't want to keep it on hold forever, so let's do this. Uh, Eric is in Wichita, Kansas. Eric, Henry Rifle, what is this? Well, I uh, notice the silver price has got down in the 11s, which makes me go buy a few more pounds of silver. <laughs> so I went into the gun store and bought me a silver Henry All Weather oh, 4570. Nice. With this really nice black oak finish. I haven't I haven't put a round through it yet, but I I think I got a little bit better deal on silver than I planned on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can certainly have more fun with it than you can have with like a you, box of silver. You bet. You bet. I got enough of those sitting there not doing anything. They're in the same safe, and they just sit there. So, How are you uh, fixed for ammo? Uh, well, I had some forty five seventy, so I actually needed a gun to go with it. <laughs> the only thing I can shoot. I bought a uh, trap door years back, and I got some government forty five seventy. I couldn't shoot through it. So now I have a gun I can use that ammo on. Hey, Jim, you guys could get together. You could take your Marlin out to his place. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> there Heck you yeah. go. Shoot. 4570 is just fun, man. And, and you know, this is going to sound really weird. I was actually having this thought yesterday about the 4570 because I was unpacking some ammo that I have. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, there's nothing in the world wrong with a 4570 lever action as a defensive gun. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I was uh, I was showing somebody some ammo the other day, a little gun lesson I was giving them, and I compared a 22. To a 4570. Said, you, know, <laughs> you don't want to get shot with anything, but what would, which would you rather get shot? Yeah, you and she's like, oh, my, fire. Yeah, yeah, oh just... my God, that's huge. I'm like, and then I'm thinking to myself, you know what? Push comes to shove. That's a big round. That's a big round. That's huh? a big round. I'm, I'm telling you what, you could, if somebody were trying to get in your house, you might be able to persuade them not to hmm. with a 4570. Or make another doorway for him. <laughs> <laughs> the exit's well, over here. <laughs> yeah. So, Eric, are, are, are you going to put an optic on, or are you just going to go with iron sights on it? Well, you know what? It's set up for, a, it's set up for an optic or right. a scope. It's already got the rail on it. So right. it's not like you're messing up a Henry with a scope. I've got exactly. a number of Henrys, and I never could put a scope on one. So, yeah, uh, these these come with the rail already up there, so you might as well throw a scope. If you do, um, my suggestion is to go with one of the really low power variables, like a one to six, something like that. That way, you can leave it on one, keep both eyes open. You you know what? You can even find uh, some of those that have lighted reticles. That would that be may be what I need to do. I think you just enabled me on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I only say that because as I turn around in my chair, I have two one to six lighted reticle scopes here that need to be put on something that I bought on sale. You know, I, I get the flyers like everybody else. And I'm just as easy. As I'm going, oh, yeah, I'll buy that. Sure. And, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I got it now. Michelle, so. send Tom the studio shipping address, please. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness. Oh, God. Well, congratulations on your rifle. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. It's a nice addition. Oh, there yeah. you go. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate that. Let's chat with Phil. He's in North Carolina. Phil, let's talk ammo. Tom, I, I called about uh, uh, the shortage of ammo. Uh-huh. He got on the 4570 thing, and I've been loading 4570s all afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Have you really? Oh, that, that's funny. But, but, but to get back to the main subject, I don't know why people are out of ammo. I've been reloading since I was 12 years old. I, I have never had a box of ammo in my life. If I could do it, anybody can do it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, what do they say? If you could uh, mix a martini and take your own temperature at the same time, you can reload. <laughs> it's it's just you know there are a lot of details. That's what it's, I say. Anybody I, I talk to that wants to start reloading, I say, listen, read the book. I read the book. You know, I, I agree. You know, if you just read the loading manuals. In fact, I was just looking at. Uh, I'm looking over here. My spirit manual. I got my my Hardy manual. My Nosler manual. And I really like the Lyman manual. There's a lot of good information in the front of that about how to reload and how to set up your dies and all that. But, you know, Michelle, the other thing is what we have now that we never had before was you can learn all this stuff with YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. 
you know, he takes all the mystery out because we were trying to figure out, well, what does that mean? You go, well, now you can actually watch somebody do it. Yep. it it's it, simple at one level. You know, if you have, for instance, if you have a rifle cartridge, you knock out the primer of the case, you resize it, then you put a primer in, you put, you know, uh, powder in, you stuff a bullet in it, and that's done. Except that there are a lot of little things like lubrication and bullet seating depth and all that. Yeah, and, right. You know, once you get it figured out, it's not difficult, but it's a little bit intimidating at first. Take your time, work your way through it. But the best way is to do it with a buddy. Now, right now with our uh, social distancing, you you know, you could FaceTime a buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. FaceTime you know, with your guy. Mm-hmm. I think really, if I were to say for anybody to start in reloading, start with mm-hmm. shotgun shells. Yeah, that makes sense because it's simple. Yep, it's easy. easy thing. Mm-hmm. And and it's pretty hard to get into a dangerous situation with a shotgun shell reload. About the only thing you could do there would be if you had a blooper load and left a wad in the barrel. Uh, but that's unlikely. But you're not going to. You're really not going to get into an excess pressure situation. Right. With a shotgun shell. Right. But you get. You just get the whole feel of of everything with yeah, the shotgun for, shell. for that aspect, but for economics of it. I mean, well, it's cheaper to buy. It's cheaper to reload shotgun shells, but they're not that expensive either. You know what I mean? I'm well, just that, devil that advocate last, here. That was that was last. Yeah, week. up until <laughs> Friday, right? <laughs> right. But in I'm your saying, world, <laughs> right? In, in a nor, in a normal situation, it's so close to the same price to buy. Well, and I think that's why a lot of people have gotten away from reloading because it is, you know, and and it's more expendable right now. I mean, or at least. Was yeah. more expendable. Yeah. Wait, what time is it? Yeah. <laughs> really? Oh. It's crazy. Yeah. Hey, let's do this. Let's grab John uh, down the line three mm-hmm. out of Ohio. John, appreciate your patience, sir. We, we got you in here. Yes, sir. Can you hear me okay this time? We, I got you. Thank you. Great. You're not Michelle, but I guess I'll talk to you. <laughs> oh, not Michelle Man, Tom again. <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> There's two of you. Wow. That's going to that's gonna leave a mark. <laughs> Yeah. Cold. Hey, before I trump your leprosy from armadillos, did you see <laughs> today on it's from the truth about guns that the Illinois Governor Pritzker designates gun and ammunition suppliers as essential? Yes. In yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Well, and the weird part is this is a liberal Democrat governor. Yes, sir. Who has listed gun stores as essential businesses who and they will remain open. Yes, sir. And that's after earlier this week, one of the mayors in the city of in, in Illinois City tried to close them. Uh, or didn't close them is not essential. That is terrific. I will tell you. Must be an election year. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> no. There, there, is sure? an, there is an effort to get some kind of a statement out of the federal government that gun stores and gun companies are essential industries. I don't know if that's going to happen or if that would have any effect on you know local or state governments, but I know that there is an effort being made to, to make that happen. Well, for sure, I have to talk yes, to sir. Alan Gottlieb because I know they have you know different court cases like in North Carolina. They can't shut down any gun stores because it's your Second Amendment right. That's right, because they used to, the law in North Carolina was, in any declared emergency, it automatically stopped gun sales. Yep. And yeah. we actually, we sued and got that changed. In, uh, was it 2012 or so? Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe? I, I'd have to go back and look. Yeah, and we got so many other lawsuits. Actually, I was talking with Alan this week about New Orleans, because they're trying to do the same thing there, and we're looking into that. What we're probably going to have to do is change the law because a lot of states actually have laws that allow cities to stop gun sales during declared emergencies. The, and the time you really need them, yeah. The time when you really need them, exactly. You're going, okay, this makes no sense. New Jersey just shut down the NICS background checks. Yes, they, they shut down all background checks, period, so they've stopped all gun sales in the state of New Jersey. Uh, and one, you know, it would be interesting to come back and find out, could, could there be a lawsuit on that basis of, you know, under what authority do you have to shut down the Second Amendment? That's a lifeline. Yes, sir. Right. Whether it's city or state. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the other part. If they did that, I would feel completely okay and even maybe even compelled to ignore them and loan guns or sell guns regardless of what the state law was. I think a lot of people would agree with you, me included. But now to the important stuff. Okay. You know, where you mentioned, where we were talking a lot, or you were talking a couple weeks ago about the possibility of getting leprosy from armadillos? Correct. Were you aware that you can get the black plague or what younger people would know as 
the bubonic plague from prairie dogs? Yes, I knew that. I, I oh. remember that. Yeah, that that's been known for many years. Uh, it's well, one of the reasons we, we not everybody knows it. That's where we, I learned it. But. We uh, we don't. That's why you don't pick them up and pack them out. <laughs> when, when you shoot them, you let them stay there and let the uh, the hawks and the buzzards come and pick them up. Uh, but yes, it is absolutely true. Prairie dogs can carry bubonic plague, uh, and it's I mean it's a known fact out there. Of course, when you get out west, you also have the Hanta virus, which uh, that's another thing to look up. That's an ugly one. And when a place gets Hanta virus in it, then you go in and clean it all with bleach. Uh, there are these ugly viruses around. It was just this was one that came out of. I was going to say it came out of nowhere, but actually it didn't. It came out of China, hmm. and uh, gee, out of maybe a you research mean... lab there. But oh yeah, it could have been with that. Was it a Harvard or an MIT professor who got arrested? Yeah, uh, heading out to China, who helped develop this? It looks like so. Yep. Just there are many levels of we don't know what's going on here. And and considering we get ninety percent of our antibiotics from China. I wouldn't trust a shipment coming in from. Mm. I, you know, Let me bite my tongue here. For interesting, a minute. you say that because I'm hopeful that when this is all over, we will recognize that we have been totally suicidal as a country mm -hmm. to allow ourselves to become dependent upon China for critical things like medicine, like rare earth, like a lot of other stuff. I mean, to let, and this is all part of their 50-year plan. They, they make no bones about it. We understand it. It's just that people will go and buy Chinese crap at Walmart because it's a little bit cheaper. Mm -hmm. You know, and when you say, well, would you buy American? Well, not if it's more expensive. Okay. Maybe after, you know, I would say that, but you know what? I know no. it won't last. It's, it's six months to a year later. We're back to buying the cheapest yep. Chinese junk we can find. Short attention span. Yep. Yeah. It just drives me crazy. Sure does. Let's do this. Take a, I appreciate the call, sir. Thank you. Let's a quick break here because I want to talk with Michelle when we come back about uh, the how, what it feels like to be alone in a gun store these days. <laughs> <laughs> you want to just talk to her on break because we really don't want to hear, her, do we? This is this is there is that. John, John, are you still out there? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Talk to me. I'm not Michelle. <laughs> Easy monitoring of your personal gun safe, hotel room safe, toolbox, storage unit, luggage, and more is now an option with the Lockdown Puck. All you need is a Wi-Fi connection to receive notifications from the puck on your phone about an open door, any detected motion, and even temperature and humidity readings. Secure what matters most with the Lockdown Puck. Visit LockdownPuck.com to learn more and to pre-order your puck today. Visit GunTalk.com slash win to enter GunTalk's Carry On Giveaway, presented by FN America, Galco Gun Leather, and Lockdown. One grand prize winner will receive the new FN 503 Slim 9mm, a $500 gift certificate to use at GalcoGunLeather.com, and a Lockdown prize pack with the new Lockdown Puck and Vault Pack. Enter now through April 17th at GunTalk.com slash win. That's GunTalk.com slash win. Uh, here we are, not Michelle and uh, Jim and mm -hmm. Michelle. So there you go. <laughs> oh, guys. Usually it's when they call and you're not working and it's Tom Hennig working the phones. They go, wait, you're not Michelle. <laughs> right. Tom was like, woohoo, and over here. It's not just me. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Well, all right. So let's go to, uh, to ground zero. Oh. You're, you're at the gun store this week. Starting in Monday, it probably you could see something was happening, but as you progressed through the week, what, what was it like? Oh, my gosh. It was just obvious increase in foot traffic and wants and desires and I'm just going to say needs at this point in time. Where, but I'd have to say the most interesting thing that I think that came out of this was the fact that we had people coming into our store that have never, ever considered the purchase of a firearm prior to this. Now, that's interesting. I, you know, I thought that probably was the case, and there were people who maybe even had made fun of or mocked people who had guns for defense. Mm -hmm. Like, why would you ever do that? Right. And now they're in there going, and, and 
they're discovering it's not that easy to buy a gun. No, <laughs> and this is, I mean, this is obviously a, a, a fear-driven purchase at this point in time. Right. But, and it's not just the fear of we don't know what's happening. It's the fear of <laughs> when are we going to have normalcy to be able to purchase such things or mm-hmm. find such things. Yeah, I, th- I think that's exactly it. I'm just thinking about people who are, they're scared. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting when you're scared, you start getting real. And that whole making fun of people who have guns for defense, people who have taken responsibility, who have the supplies, who have what they need, and no more mocking us. It, you know, the other thing that's interesting, and I've seen this online, where people are suddenly buying guns, and some of them from the left are thinking that people on the right with guns are going to come take their stuff. <laughs> of, course we're thinking, and we're, of course, we're thinking, we don't need your stuff. We already got our stuff. Right. right. Well, and I'm not sure where, I mean, where did the firearm industry come into play with all of this? I mean, you know, the, the food and I don't understand the toilet paper thing necessarily either, but, it, you know, I guess just the, the lockdown fear protecting what you have. I, I I'm think not, so. You know, I'm not quite sure, but I think that's the feel that that we have for certain coming into the store. Um, I I had a question for you about that. Gun people, I think gun people, we have a common thread, especially young people. You see it, uh, you know, the respect level's high, the yes sir, no sir, the the politeness. Is any of that changing in the retail world now with your customer base? You know what? I have to say honestly, and it was one of the things that we tried to to discuss with our local media as they called and, and interviewed and came into the stores and stood outside of the stores and interviewed people was everybody has been so kind in our store. Mm. I mean, they just, there's been conversation, there's been laughter, there's been a lot of understanding. Um, right. I, those, those are the gun people. But what about the people that were never, no, never, I, no, I mean, like, even for them, really? th- yeah, I, I, honestly, okay. you know, they, they form their line. I mean, a line's a line, you okay. know, they form their line and, and they're waiting. Now, some people don't necessarily understand, like, why do I have to wait? You know, cause the NIC right. system there, you know, the, the background check system is what tells us whether or not they can walk I, out the door I was with t- it. I was, I was told there were no background checks. That's why we need to pass background checks. Oh, yeah. 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 Now you got to stand and wait for the background check that's been here since, oh, forever now. Well, and, you know, like they're experiencing, I don't even know, I think the number on Wednesday was like a 300% increase. Yes. Yep, yep. And they cannot handle the amount of requests that are coming through. They're crashing. Yeah. You don't, when you're talking about the FBI. Uh, yes, the FBI NICS, system, the NICS system. NICS, yeah, they had a 300% increase, three times what they normally have. Right. And they're just their not volume. geared up for that. And honestly, in the last couple of days, they've gone down at least twice where the systems have crashed. The, the computer wow. system has crashed. Well, that just ties everything up. Because you can't just release it. I can't release yeah. it, no. I mean, if you haven't been a person that has planned in advance and already have a CCW permit for the state of Ohio, if you've got a CCW permit, you can fill out the paperwork and you don't have to go through the NICS check because you've already had that portion done with your CCW permit right. application. Uh I'm like, sorry, we'll hold it for you. You can wait. <laughs> you know, you decide yeah, what you want there, the force yeah. to do, but we cannot right. release it. Holy cow. It's... And I know that these people are surprised when they come face to face with the reality of what it takes to buy a gun. I mean, there actually are people who are calling gun companies and wanting to order guns and have them shipped to their house. Right. I mean, I know going, there's, what? you know, the ammunition manufacturers, they are not answering the phone first off, but they said, you know, people have come to their gates, <laughs> some of the, <laughs> the reps and stuff like, we want to buy a box of ammo. Like, one, we've never sold to anybody off of the street. Right. <laughs> We're, not We're not changing not our policy that's, now. That's, that's not what we do. <laughs> right. Uh, and so, I mean, I just think that people are just, it, it's it's obviously fear driven. My concern, I know like, you know, the members of our stores concern is the fact that, okay, you've reacted to this. You have the purchase of the firearm that you feel is the most appropriate for you know, price reasons or, mm-hmm. you know, given your circumstance, revolver versus semi-auto, et cetera. But now what? Now mm-hmm. in a month, are you going to get the training? 
Are you going to remember who I was? Are you going to come back into my store? Are you going to learn how to maintain them? Are you going to be a responsible owner in the home and make sure they're locked up? Well, that's the part that concerns me. No, the answer is no, they're not going to get training. No, they're not going to go shooting. But they had somebody show them how to load it, and it's stuck somewhere in their house. And chances are at least some of them are not going to store them responsibly. And you don't ever know what the situation is there, whether they got kids or, or what's going on. So, you know. Well, and then let's just take that a step farther. You've been able to flex your muscle and take advantage of your Second Amendment, right? Are you going to vote for that ability to maintain itself in elections mm. come November? Great point. Hmm. I don't know. Um, I mean, you felt the necessity now and it's there now. But yeah, happens, but it won't happen. That's a yeah, once in a lifetime what happens, thing. What happens in a year? Right. No, you know, I said, we've counseled through this before. You know, we've counseled through mm -hmm. the purchasing of ARs and, you know, you've had your rush on different types of things. Never has it been an all out everything purchase, right. you know, where, where dis I mean, distribution has nothing. Our industry isn't going to just pick up and, and but, maintain when, this pace. When you call your suppliers. They have nothing. They don't have anything to send you. Nothing. And you can, if you want to pay the price, I mean, we watch guns go up. I'm not joking from, from some places, some suppliers by a hundred dollars in a matter of an hour or two. Yes. Because they can. Because they well, can. You know, yes, but don't think of it as gouging, honestly. Uh, there is another line of thinking. Economists don't even recognize the concept of gouging. They just say, look, that is just market forces at Supply work. And, demand, and, yeah. that, and they say, look, and that's how you get efficient distribution is, yeah. you know, that that is just what it is. So don't get all bent out of shape about price gouging, except in the case of cheaper than dirt. Okay, so. Well, the, yeah, that well, was. Yeah, but that's another thing, too. What's price gouging? Raising your box ammo from 25 to 50 isn't gouging, but 75 is? I mean. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. But. I guess, you know, if, you know, it's that same old thing like you always talk about. It's worth whatever somebody's going to pay for it. Right. <laughs> well, it is. And, you know, if, okay, if you suddenly got an 18-wheeler load of 9 millimeter ammo at your store, what could you sell it for? Almost anything you wanted. Yeah, except we're not like that. I know you're not. I'm just saying what you could sell it for. Sure. And, you know, you guys wouldn't do that, but some would. It's a weird situation, but yeah, for those who haven't paid attention this week, this has been changing on an hourly mm -hmm. basis. Right. I mean, if you called your supplier, say you call Lipsy's or Sports South mm -hmm. in the morning, and you called them back in the afternoon, the inventory is not what it was, and the prices may not be what they were, mm -hmm. depend, you know, depending. And they're calling Ruger, and Ruger's going, we got nothing. Right. It's just like, you know, no, it's, it's all gone, because... The other thing I guess people need to understand, Ruger does not have a warehouse full of guns because right. they don't they don't want to have a warehouse full of right. guns. No, they make to the orders that were put out there in February. Right. right. When they <laughs> make a gun, it leaves the plant that day or the next day. Mm -hmm. Nothing stays there. Right. So it's and, the distributors, if anywhere. Yeah. Now, the distributors are the ones that have the big warehouses. Right. And the, the, a lot of the gun companies use what they call a two-step distribution. They go to a distributor, and then it goes to a dealer. Uh, some gun companies do sell direct to dealers. <clears throat> but the distributor basically becomes the warehouse for gun companies, mm -hmm. or, or gun stores, rather. Also, well, Actually, both. Both, yeah. Think about it. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, Michelle, your store doesn't have to have 5,000 guns in inventory because you have access to 5,000 or 50,000 guns that are two days away from a distributor. Correct. Uh, up until last Thursday. Up until last Thursday. <laughs> and now there's nothing. I mean, there's, they're just gone. Right. Um, now, if you have, uh, and if there's somebody listening who says, yeah, but I, I was never really a gun person, but I really would like to have one now. If you have a buddy, a friend you can get together with, maybe you can borrow one or, or buy one. But here's a question for you two. If somebody you just kind of know is not really, you know, close to you, says, hey, you know, you've got guns, could I borrow a gun from you? And you don't really know them that well. I'm thinking I'm not going to do it. Yeah, well, I'm up to six. I texted you last night about that. You have, you have loaned six I've guns I've loaned out so six far. so far. To yeah. people you know but to people intimately? You know. No, somebody met at a bus stop. Right. Just... <laughs> cool, man, yeah. that, that's good. Yeah. I, I hope you at least, like, you know, got a business card or right. you know, you know, a picture of their driver's license. Right, exactly. These are all people, obviously, I know they're non-felons. They would pass a 4473 if they were... Um, you know, going to the retail store. So why why the lack of a purchase prior to this? 
why for them? Yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. I think each, each one's got their own little little thing. Um, just just the immediate need, you know. Yeah, it would be nice to have one someday. Uh, one gal is uh, is going through a divorce that's kind of strange, mm-hmm. um, and she's like, you know, my husband was always here. He always protected us. Blah blah blah. And now he's gone. It's just the timing lined up right for her. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but heck, I was in your store yesterday because I'm going. Hey, you know, I got some ammo, but. Let's see. Maybe they got a truck, you know. Maybe they got so, some good deals on it today. So yeah. So I walked. I walked in. They rearranged the store since last time I was there. Walk in the store and I see a lineup for thirty people. I'm going, damn. There's a lot of ammo sales there. So I go back and they've got two ammo, two different spots. I go in the ammo room and they've got you know, three thirty eight Lapua and some three oh eight, which I was surprised they have three. And that was it. I'm going, huh, well, maybe, maybe, you know, they've rearranged the store. That's got to be the ammo line out there. I guess I'll just get in line with everybody. But before I do, I'll just kind of walk over there and shoulder up and see what they have. I'm going to wait for an hour to find that happening. Right. Nope. It was 30 people waiting in line to purchase guns. And I don't think you guys did what they did in Detroit, but several Detroit gun stores are, you can only buy ammo if you're buying a gun with it, and it has to be matched caliber. So you can't, and you still got a two-box limit or whatever it is, you can't go in and buy a 9 mil and buy a 1,000 rounds of two two three. Right, yeah. And it's like, wow, it's, you know, it's, it's form of rashing, right? Right. Mm-hmm. So I get to your place, and I'm, I'm checking this out going, huh, well, I'm going to walk around because they don't, you're out of ammo, and I didn't need to buy anything else. But there's, normally I go in your store and there's... Yeah, three to a dozen people in there. There are 60 people walk around the store. And that's why I kind of asked you, does your theft patterns change? Or does it, does, you know, people that aren't gun people are a little shakier maybe. If you're dealing with that kind of environment, it's kind of why I asked you that. Because I stole a bunch of earmuffs and goggles and stuff. <laughs> You're such a dork. Got, got, got some eye protection. No, nobody noticed that he actually was wearing six pairs of muffs when he walked right, out. Right, right. <laughs> so so this, this guy gets up there and he's he's bummed out that, they don't, they, you know, they don't have the ammo he wants for his gun and mm-hmm. etc. He was waiting in line, and he did exactly what you you said. He, I can't, can't, I don't know if it was the Lapua or 308, but he ended up taking the ammo they had, the last two boxes of the ammo they had, if they had a gun that would fit it. Really? Yeah. So that's what the guy did. He, he like secured the two boxes, and they walked over to the rifles. I, I, I think a 338 Lapua makes a great home defense gun. <laughs> Yeah. If, assuming you want to shoot through like 16 houses in your neighborhood. Well, right, you right. know, that's, like, the, that's the new precision cartridge. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. But man, I'm just going to it, it, reach, it reaches out to 12 feet. <laughs> right. Just, but, wow. but actually seeing it take place was like, wow, this, this really does happen. And then uh, I had, had uh, the gal I was telling you about was wanted to protect herself. And she said, well, I'm going to bring my son with me because he's, he's more of a gunny than I am. I said, okay. So I'm, you know. 17-year-old kid, I'm figuring he's into skateboarding and right. Xbox and stuff, and got out a couple guns and we wanted to go over them with him, and she's like, yeah, just just give him, you know, he, he would be the one protecting us, blah, 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 he's the man of the house kind of deal. I, mean, I, I get that. I'm like, okay, so I hand him the first gun. This kid takes the gun, perfect grip, finger outside the trigger guard, he brings the muzzle down in a safe direction away from mom and I, looks to make sure it's empty, even though he saw me, you know, empty mm-hmm. it. And, oh, this this got a nice grip. You know, what else you got? So then I realized that the kid was a gunny, so I started showing him a GT20 and GT10 and stuff. He loved those, by the way. <laughs> Try to steal it. I had to beat him up. But, <laughs> no, <God. laughs> but, I mean, just such a polite, polite young guy and very, very gunsy. I said, man, I, I've been watching you closer than you think, and you're really competent with a firearm. And again, we're not shooting at all. This is just right. gun handling. No, you, you know what? You can tell. When yeah. he picks up oh, hands, it, you yeah. can tell. Absolutely. It was instant. But, uh, but I kept watching for different things. And, right. you know, he would, he would just the way he, 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 everything, the way he stood, the way he chambered. And I said, you're, you're really, you know, gun aware. He's like, well, my dad's an FBI agent and he trained me. <laughs> and I said, you know, <laughs> you the FBI trained your dad well. And he, and that followed through because of all the, I mean, he was more gun savvy and, and safety aware than 90% of the people that are my buddies that are gun mm-hmm. guys. Well, I mean, we have people coming in that's like, do you have holsters? Like, yes, we, you know, we have holsters. Like, I need a holster for my nine millimeter. Or what is it? It's a nine millimeter. <laughs> well, oh, no. and there's a, you know, I mean, there's a lot of those produced. So do you know who makes it? You know, just trying to pull information out. But mm-hmm. I mean, and it, it seems like a mute point, but it's like, unless you have 
the firearm right now with you, mm -hmm. I can't help you because I don't even have one to try. In yeah, oh, yeah. Hold. That's like saying yeah. I need I need a part from a pickup truck. Well, what is it? It's a pickup truck. Right. It's a Ford. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, well, what year? What model? What? Yeah. But you know, I mean, honestly, wow. it, it's a matter of I can't even. I can't even set you up with a holster because I can't even show you what it's going to feel like or how it functions because I don't have a firearm to put in it. Yeah. Is I mean, it, and is that's your wheel the of gun concern. still out there? N no, all of that's been yeah. secured. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the the other there. part is, you know, you almost want to say, look, if you're brand new to this, you don't need a holster. No, because right? right. you probably shouldn't be carrying this on your person. Well, and that was a lot of that conversation was taking place, you know, yeah. like legal transportation. Right. What, what can you do? No, you actually cannot carry this gun. You cannot have a holster. Yeah. yeah you have it? to carry it this way. You have to do open carry if you're going to do anything. Right. And, you know, and since you don't know anything about it, maybe you just have this for your home defense gun. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I don't know. It's, it's troublesome. And, and at the same time, it's really revealing to watch people who didn't care were either ambivalent or actually, uh, you know, anti-gun just spin around instantly and say, I've got to have one. Just please continue your work and get your training and vote the way we need this to be so we have these rights. Yeah, because next, there are people out there who want to make it to where you can't do the next thing, whatever the next thing is. Mm -hmm. You simply would not be able to go buy a gun legally at all. And so, you know, yeah, you need to come on the side of folks who are supporting gun rights because now you suddenly have become aware of how important it is. And maybe you're starting to understand why we gun people to you formerly have seemed like fanatics only because we are very much into this and we fully understand that when times get really bad and really scary, it's when you're going to want this. And it's not like a nice thing to have, it's a critical thing to have. Right. Yep. Katrina, <laughs> COVID. <laughs> Yeah, buddy. I'm uh, telling you, you know. Yeah. Anyway, I wanted to give a gun talk attaboy shout out to Simon for his uh, That's his, his prowess and everything else. He's he's a good kid and he's got a head on his shoulders and uh, it was great to see. It was very invigorating. That is uh, reassuring. I mm -hmm. like to hear that. All right. Well, Michelle, so you don't have to go to work for a while because no, you got sir. nothing to sell. Got nothing. Got nothing. You know. And besides that, they're going to shut you down anyway in your state. So you time know. will tell what what we're limited mm. to. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. It's just, you know, and I'm, I'm serious. We are all are going to have to work hard at fighting the depression, uh, the mm -hmm. fear, the hopelessness that comes from sitting around and watching the news, watching the news, hours and hours and hours of scare stuff. And it is scary stuff, and, you know, and it's real. I mean, I've got doctors and friends who are telling me, yeah, he says, I, I talked to a doctor buddy this morning who's really done a lot of study on this. He said, yeah, he says, I wipe down packages before they come in the house. Mm -hmm. You know, with, he says, I have a dirty table and a clean table and stuff goes on the dirty table and it gets clean and then I wipe everything down and then it gets to come in the house, but not until it's all been disinfected. Right. And he's serious as he can be. So, well, and I think you have to be. If you think something as simple as dog food. <laughs> Where, where's mm. your dog food come from? Mm, I'm yeah. I mean, is it shipped into the, I, you know, for all of those businesses that sought out China because things were made cheaper? Mm. Ugh. I, I, I wasn't kidding, by the way, yeah. earlier in the show. I actually did go to the store and bought a bottle of Everclear. Did you? Yes, I did. And uh, I have Multiple. three large bottles of aloe vera. And now I have uh, six little bottles, little two ounce squeeze bottles. And by golly, we're making our own hand sanitizer. Yeah, you, you can't even find that stuff around here. Really? Yeah, it's no. all gone now. Oh yeah, it's been gone for days. Oh man. You know it's weird. I, I I just bought a bunch of that, some Clorox disinfectant wipes, and a bunch of Citrus Magic antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral stuff. Mm -hmm. I never buy that stuff. I bought it about a month ago. Just you know, it wouldn't be a bad idea. You never know. Now I'm going, bam. I just yeah. wonder if some of this, like, where did it start and where did it fall to? Because I know with some of my family members that are down in Florida, even it hadn't hit there until the middle of the week. Like the concerns weren't going and buying a right. firearm. They weren't getting the ammunition. And so we were well into mm -hmm. phone calls and emails and texts and, you yeah. know, everything else. Do right. you have, do you have, do you have? And so, you know, the delay across the country is kind of interesting to, to, to watch. You know, another thought I had with all of this, and it kind of goes to that whole, we talk about 
awareness, situational awareness and training is believe the signals. We talk about that of, you know, if something yep. seems wrong or feels wrong, pay yep. attention and, and act quickly. And same thing here, like, you know, a week and a half, two weeks ago, we knew something was weird, something was going on. And we could start to see that. I mean, it was four weeks ago when I ordered some more survival food. Mm -hmm. uh, it oh, was yeah. two weeks ago when I was starting to buy stuff. And it was only sometime midweek this week when people, a lot of people were waking up to, hey, something's going on here. And it's just part of the, you have to be a big picture person. And when you first feel that tickle in, you know, that, wow, something weird is going on here, mm -hmm. don't wait around. Take action quickly because that's what will get you out of a attack situation, but also will prepare you for something like this. You just got to change the way you look at stuff and stop telling yourself, it's, oh, don't be a ninny. Yeah. You know nothing. what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's nothing. It, yeah. You yeah. know, and, and, you know, this is where <laughs> I'm just going to put this out there. This is where something as simple as a flashlight, mm -hmm. pepper spray, backup batteries. This is where all of that comes into play. Your medication. I mean, yep. our world is at a halt. And I honestly have to say a lot of my fear goes to the elderly. Oh, Without a doubt. I mean, all these people hoarding and, you know, there's elderly people that can't afford medications over a house. And now, now they can't find toilet paper or, you know, I'm, right. I mean, Which something is, as simple as cool. that. A lot, a and lot. it breaks my heart. Like, stop, stop what you're doing. Take care of your fellow person. And it's kind of neat because along those lines, a lot of the major grocers, at least out in the Midwest, are having a, like a one hour opening for, you have to be a senior citizen to get in the store the first hour. Yeah. And it's yeah, giving they, them they, the opportunity to shop with a little more comfort and not the franticness or less franticness. Yeah. Yeah, they're doing that here. Uh, yeah. Like a little piggly yeah. wiggly. Yeah. Six to seven a.m. Mm -hmm. oh, man. I'm there, baby. Me well, and that's because you pulled an all-nighter. You never went to bed before that's, that time. That's true. I've been drinking all night, so right. it's all good. You know, I'll just dr I'll drive over there with my gun after we've been drinking all night. We're good. Great. <laughs> See two of everything. Got a gun on each hip. <laughs> <laughs> Yosemite Sam. That's me. Right. <laughs> Right. It, it is oh, cool to see pe people pull together. Uh, it, it's just, I don't know, I still think people, I heard actually somebody had a corona party last night, Tom. Can you believe that? Yes, I can. <laughs> yeah. Somebody asked me today. You were serving said, Bud Lights, though, of course. Yes, yes. <laughs> no, we didn't. We bought Corona. You, you, you actually found Corona beer, didn't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. We did. We bought a few cases of it. We had a, we had a music fest at the studio last night. People are avoiding it like the plague yeah, for well, some reason. We, we had a six-foot distance <laughs> rule. We had kept our six-foot distance rule. Yeah. Yeah, because all the clubs are closed. None of the musicians in town can play anywhere. Oh, that's fun. It's like we still want to play. You know, a lot of guys are actually doing you know, like a pay-per-view kind of thing, guys and gals. Uh, but we decided just to have a free jam and broadcast it, and uh, everybody kept their six-foot distance and drank Corona beers. It was great. So what did you play? I played keyboards, and then I let Tom play the keyboard right after that so he could get the virus off the keys and Good rub man. his eyes. Rub his eyes. Such a tour. I like that. Yeah, we, had, we had like a dozen, dozen. well, according to our uh, governor, Mike DeWine, we're only allowed 10 people at a time. So we, uh, we had to keep that limit. We did keep with everybody got a name tag that said uh, guest number nine. Thing one, thing two, thing right. three. <laughs> right. And a couple Num of people left. We let two more in. Num number nine. Number, number nine. nine. Yeah. Yes. Two or remember. So you that. still got. I mean, this is these are serious times. But at some point, you also have to say, hey, yes. you can't stop living. You can live differently, but you can't right. stop living. You got to have fun. You got to. You got to. You got to have a good time because otherwise you'll drive yourself nuts. I'll be yes. eating yes. my neighbor by Thursday. You know that kind of mentality. I yep. knew you were weird. <laughs> You don't think I bought a chest yeah, freezer for yeah. nothing, do you? Yeah. He's weird in oh so many ways. Yeah. <laughs> the after show is only a one hour max deal, so we can't even that, go into that. That is, there's a limit. And and you know what? I think we've just about hit it. Oh, so yeah. There you go. So it's time to stop talking. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then once we stop talking, we can... So the takeaway is, hey, guys, seriously, be careful. Take care of your families. Be, you know, everybody. Yep. Take his stuff seriously. But at the same time, don't drive yourself crazy. Amen. And there are people out there who need some emotional support. Yep. And a lot of it, honestly, you really can help people by calling them on the phone. Using that FaceTime or Skype is so helpful. Stay in touch with your parents, your grandparents, your kids if they're away. You know, it makes a difference. I mean, I know it does for us. Mm -hmm. So you just have to take active measures and think, okay, 
what am I going to do today to fight this off? And part of it, I'm just going to tell you, we have found it to be really helpful. It sounds really silly. It's just to get out and walk around the neighborhood. Well, and you know, at a time like this, just to throw an idea out there, there's all kinds of volunteer efforts going on. Mm -hmm. Give blood. Yeah, that's right. And they say that uh, you can still give blood during these times. And you now the need is there, but the donations are down. So that's an right. excellent point. You know, senior, I, senior dinners. I mean, there's so many things. I don't even know how you so prepare one of those. A senior dinner? Yeah, so, no, a senior. It's like 350 for two hours. I mean... <laughs> What? I have no okay, idea. You know what? I can't even go over there and touch him because it's six feet. That's <laughs> right. You can, you, we can get you a six foot long oh pole. Oh my gosh, we made it so far. We should have shut it down two yeah. minutes yeah. ago. See, see, I knew it. I knew it. You know, we always wait till it's gone too far and but, then we shut it down. But yeah, just just take care of your fellow American because this is this yeah, all the reading and all the history. It just brings back those World War times of ingenuity and yeah. You know, we got to be prosperous with this. I think I was, I was thinking about running out and getting me some tomato plants and putting them in and doing the whole deal and say, you know what, we'll start a garden out here. Yeah, well. Yeah. Victory garden. We, we prepped last fall when we went deer hunting. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jim, well, you know that freezer you talked about? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we got a bird feeder out here, which really is more of a squirrel feeder. So that, could, right. that, could, that could pay off. There you go. That's hunting over bait. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> you didn't say anything about honey. <laughs> oh, hunting, hunting. Hunting. <laughs> oh, and with that, it's time for us to squirrel away from this place. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. you're all nice. Oh. <laughs> all right, love you guys. You guys be you careful. Be good, Take man. care. Hey, thanks for checking out the after show. And don't forget to join the Gun Talk Truth Squad at GunTalk.com and grab Gun Dealio for your smartphone. It'll save you money on guns, ammo, and more.